my name is Rebecca. Welcome to my channel. I have taken the quiz. I know that I'm a Hufflepuff. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. I had mentioned to my sister that I would love to go to Universal, go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. My niece caught wind and she was like, well, let's just do it. So we did. And it was amazing. And I loved every minute of it, even though it was hot. I loved it. We were shopping. I was looking at different things and my niece said, look at that. And I, I didn't comprehend what she was trying to show me. And she picked it up and stuck it under my nose. And she was like, look, it was Harry Potter ribbon. It was also on the clearance rack. And I purchased it because, hello, I really wasn't sure what at the time I was going to do with it. But the more I wandered around the park, the more I thought about it, I got some inspiration to make me a Harry Potter wreath. So, come craft with me. I'm going to start my project out by using a dowel rod and a finial. You can buy finials at Hobby Lobby or Michael's. I took mine off of an old lamp. If you have been to Universal, you know that wands are an integral part of the Harry Potter experience. You can purchase unique personal ones or Harry Potter character ones starting from $89 to $139. You can also order them off of Amazon, but for this project, a dowel rod, a finial, and some hot glue, making a design on my dowel rod is going to work just fine. And then I'm going to use folk art paint and paint it. color that I painted the dowel rod didn't quite match up to the color that was on the finial so I took a little bit of the paint and I put it inside the grooves then I took some Waverly antique wax and a baby wipe I just went over the entire dowel rod and finial with the antique wax so that all of my colors look cohesive and have a purpose I purchased a book at the Dollar Tree. I took the dust jacket off. What I was looking for was the color of the book, the hardback book. I found one that was solid black and now all I have to paint is the spine. I'm going to use some Waverly chalk paint in ink. The embossing on the book was a little bit deeper, so I did make sure that I had my brush down into the grooves of the writing, and I had a very good solid color. I have these stickers that I purchased at Walmart. They are 98 cents. They come in a variety of colors, and I'm going to spell out school book on the spine of my book.
love these letters. They're very cost effective and they, they stick very well to your project. I also save them from project to project so that if I need to make an R out of a B, then I can. I have purchased this Hogwarts crest while I was at Universal. It is a magnet. You can purchase these magnets off of Amazon. They start at about $5.89. They also have the different houses. I took some hot glue and put that on the center of my school book. For the wreath portion of my project, I purchased an 18 inch wreath at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use a small piece of foam that I had in my craft stash. However, I did purchase it at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to zip tie that on to the wreath form. I'm going to make sure that it is really good and tight. I'm going to put a couple of zip ties around it so that it is not going to go anywhere. Once my foam is secure, I'm going to take some hot glue and put that all over the top and start applying some reindeer moss. I did put some glue on the sides and kind of cut my hands around it so that it would stay. I have a sunflower bush that I have purchased at Dollar Tree and I'm going to start putting my sunflowers into my foam. I started at the sides and then started working my way up to the center. I wanted to do the sides first because no matter what angle you're viewing the wreath at, it would have a really good coverage. It would also look good no matter where I displayed it. I put all of them in. I did clip a little bit of the foliage off with my wire cutters. And once I had all of my sunflowers in the way that I wanted them, then I was able to put some hot glue on my leaves on my foliage and tuck them in where I thought it needed just a little bit of that greenery color. I do not like to precisely place my flowers into any kind of arrangement that I'm doing because I like for it to look very natural, like it was growing in nature, and it has kind of a purposed, chaotic look about it. I did have some ivy greenery that I decided to add into it because that made it look a lot more natural and I placed that in. You can buy ivy at any craft store or at the Walmart Dollar Tree. However, I will say I usually buy a large bush at the Hobby Lobby and then I can just use parts of it in my projects. I always cut my chenille stems into threes. I'm going to use two rolls of the brown deco mash from the Dollar Tree and two rolls of the off-white. I'm going to put them up against my mat and cut them in approximately seven inches. I'm going to rotate my colors and laying this out, I'm going to roll it in a diagonal so that it has kind of a wispy, spiky look to it instead of a very precise rolled look going to roll two bunches of brown, one bunch of the white, off-white, and then put a chenille stem around it, twist it really, really tight, and start putting it into my wreath. I'm going to rotate the colors, and on the next one, then I'll use two of the off-white and one of the brown. I'm going to cut my deco mesh in pieces and make my bundles of three as I go along because I am unclear with all of the flowers and the other things that I'm adding into the wreath, how much deco mesh I actually need. So instead of cutting all of my pieces at the same time and then making my bundles, I'm just going to make bundles at the time that I need them. I love working with deco mesh. It gives your wreaths a lot of character. It's a very budget friendly way to fill a wreath and make it look full and I'm going to use the middle bar of my wreath form and start filling it in.
around my greenery, made sure that my chenille stems were twisted tight on the back, and then I was ready to put my book on. I zip tied my book and used the back cover to attach my zip tie around the wreath form and I made sure that it was really, really tight. Then I took some hot glue and put it on the inside of the book. Um, several pages down, I would put some more hot glue. Then I put a very liberal amount on the inside cover of the book. I did not want it to flip or fall out. I also attached a black zip tie around the bottom, but I lost the footage of that. I'm sorry. I'm ready to make a bow. I'm putting a lot of elements into this wreath. That is why I'm making my deco mesh bundles as I need them. Very simply with this bow, lay out different types of ribbon, different textures, different colors, and just lay them, fold them over, and cut them off the same length. This is the most easy bow in the world to make and it's going to be very nice and fluffy. I added some Dollar Tree ribbon in. I shot my stash. I purchased the Harry Potter ribbon at Universal, but you do not need the Harry Potter ribbon to make this wreath, I promise you. Take a zip tie, put it about four inches from the end of the ribbon that you've cut off, tighten it really good, clip off the end of your zip tie, then you can start fluffing your bow and manipulating the tails as you think it looks nice. This is a really great technique to use if you have difficulty with your hands or you have a hard time holding things and bunching things together, putting things together, making a layered bow. This is the best bow method to use. This is not a tutorial. There are so many other people on YouTube and Facebook, Instagram that do great bow tutorials, but this is a very easy bow to make. I dovetail my ends at the end of my ribbon. I folded it over, cut it in an upward diagonal motion. Makes a nice dovetail to put the bow on. I ran another zip tie through the center of my bow and I fastened that onto the wreath for. Now I'm getting ready to just make some more bundles and fill in my wreath. There is a lot going on with this wreath. I'm putting a lot of elements into it. I'm going to add two more bows to this wreath and now I'm going to use the deco mesh bundles that I made, tuck them in on the bar that is the outward bar of the wreath form so that no matter how you look at this wreath it's going to be finished and you won't see the, any of the form peeking out from underneath. I'm going to use different ribbon along with my Harry Potter ribbon that I purchased at Universal and start making another bow.
to catch this bow the exact same way that I did before with the other bow, run a zip tie through the middle and attach it to the wreath form. The bow is going to fluff out and you cannot see the zip tie that I use to secure my book to the wreath form. And once I have it all fluffed out, then I'm going to make my other bow. Every bow that I make is going to be a different size and have different textures in it. things to coordinate yet not necessarily match. I like a lot of character and texture, a lot of things for my eye to be drawn to and so that I'm not just focused on one thing. I'm going to take my deco mesh and cut more bundles of three and apply them where I think that it needs to be filled in some more. fluffed up but I needed to use up just this little last bit of ribbon. If you want to add some fullness to your florals and give your florals something a little bit different you can always take some ribbon fold it in two make kind of a puffy loop wrap it really tight with some florist wire you could put a little dowel rod or a bamboo skewer in this if you wanted to. I'm just going to dovetail my ends and hot glue it and stick it in amongst my sunflowers so that 
the whole entire piece looks cohesive, full, and really vibrant. little tips and tricks that I have picked up over the years to making florals and wreaths look full. If I have one of those tips, I'm going to pass it along to you. I put some hot glue along the side of my wand and I attached it to my book. I love this wreath. It is my favorite wreath that I have done in a very long time. I did paint an apple pick from the Dollar Tree black and tucked it in there so that it would go with my existing fall decor. I'm telling you, I styled this with my fall tree and it is simply magnificent. I couldn't love it anymore. I want to encourage you to find inspiration in every place that you go, everything that you do. When you tap into your creative side and you have an outlet, it is a stress reliever it makes you feel good about yourself it gives you a sense of accomplishment and everybody needs just a little boost so don't forget to subscribe hit that bell so that you know when i've uploaded my next video give me a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching crafts laughs and chaos